Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. So today is gonna be the beginning of another 30-day challenge. This is one's actually gonna be 30 days, and I'm gonna be explaining to you what the challenge is gonna consist of. But yes, we are still keeping the carnivore diet on this, so come with me, and let's check this out, guys. So what is this new diet that I've been alluding to? Well, it's not really new. It's called intermittent fasting. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about it all over the media, all over the news. A lot of people have used it and with great success. I have used intermittent fasting in the past and I haven't had all that of great results, but I have had some results with it. And I was doing back then what is called a 16 to eight which is basically you fast for 16 hours and for eight hours, that is your feeding window. And so what I'm gonna be doing is, I'm going to be using intermittent fasting along with the carnivore diet. That's right, this is where the carnivore diet comes into play into all of this. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using the combination of the carnivore diet with intermittent fasting to see how that combo works and if it does work at all. I'm also going to be using it along with something called time-restricted feeding. One of the leading scientists behind this is Dr. Sachin Panda and he comes in in several interviews, they're all over the YouTube, um, especially one very famous one with Dr. Rhonda Patrick and if you guys haven't checked that out or if you guys don't know about it, I'm going to link it up here, that way you guys can go ahead and check it out and I'll also leave it down there in the description, that way you guys can go ahead and check that video out. It's super informative but... Um, with the fear of kind of dumbing this down too much is basically the idea of restricting yourself to eating during a certain period of the day for a consistent period of time and that basically starts to implement a circadian rhythm within your body which allows it to know when to expect food as opposed to just maybe opening your intermittent fasting window from 8 in the morning today to like 2 p.m. in the afternoon and that'll be your window today and then like three four days you switch it up to maybe four to I don't know seven or something like that because your schedule wouldn't allow it so what this basically makes you do is basically set it up all the time to kind of be around the same time that way your body knows when to expect food a good example is let's say you want to eat start eating every day at one o'clock and every day that's when you start your feeding window and then when you end your feeding window let's say around five o'clock then that is your feeding window every single day and you get used to it and after a while your body starts acclimatizing to it and kind of like starts to get the hang of it and so the idea behind this is that your whole body starts to get in tune with this situation and it starts kind of tweaking the right boxes for the right things to start working properly which turns you basically into a fat burning machine again with the fear of dumbing all this down way too much this is kind of what time restricted feeding is so I'm gonna be putting it together with intermittent fasting and the way I'm gonna be doing it is quite simple actually what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be feeding on a window of four hours which I know is pretty restrictive in comparison to most people most people like to do a 16 to 8 an 18 to 6 or a 20 to 4 or some people I know even do 22 to 2 which is um, a little bit too extreme at this point for me, but I'm gonna be starting it off with a 20 to four. So I'm gonna be fasting for 20 hours during the day and I'm gonna be eating, having a feeding window of four hours only. This feeding window is gonna happen from two o'clock to around six. That's gonna be the cutoff time. And the reason for this is that way I can eat with my girlfriend, that way I can wait for her. And during the day when I'm most busy, I don't have to worry about eating, I don't have to worry about all this meal prepping or anything like that and I can go about my day doing my business and some way during the middle when I get a little bit of downtime, which is usually that two to six kind of downtime, that's when I'll get my meals in and that's when I'll have a little bit more time to prepare them and actually enjoy preparing them as opposed to being super rushed and getting some food in or something like that. Now, as I've mentioned to you guys, I tried intermittent fasting before, but when I tried intermittent fasting, I never really tried it with the carnivore diet. This was way before I even tried my carnivore diet. So once I learned about the carnivore diet, I thought for a quick second, what if I tried intermittent fasting with the carnivore diet? Would, would that actually make a huge difference? And 
and I gave it a shot for two to three days and I saw some amazing results actually. I think that's those are the biggest fat loss results that I've ever seen since I started doing any kind of diet or trying any type of different protocol. And so I never really stuck with it because at that point I was barely trying out the carnivore diet and I was super skeptical back then. But now I've, I think I've, I've given this carnivore diet a fair amount of time. I've given it um, two shots at least for 90 days, which is a lot more than what most people do. And I know some of you super carnivores out there, awesome, you guys have chosen this as a lifestyle. That's props to you. It's, it's definitely not, not as easy as people think. People think it's, it's, it's a super dumbed down version that some people are like just lazy and like, yeah, you're just eating meat and you want to take the, 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 the work out of it of actually cooking some good meals and stuff. No, it can actually be really hard and that if not, I think it can actually be a little bit harder knowing what nutrients are actually going into your body and how much of them you are actually getting. So it's definitely not an easy thing. And also it can get a little mundane as we've explained before and I think in combination with the intermittent fasting, as I said, there's going to be some really good results and putting in this time restricted feeding, which is going to allow my body to kind of absorb these things at the prime times, which actually just seemed to work out for me perfect, which is that two to six o'clock um, time window. I think this is going to yield some pretty good results. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to show you guys that I'm doing this intermittent fasting, time restricted feeding slash carnivore diet is because I wasn't happy with the results that I got from just doing solemnly carnivore diet for 90 days, both of the times. The first time I actually got some pretty decent results and I was really happy with them. But when I checked my blood work, my blood work wasn't at the par with what my body was kind of starting to show. And the second time around, my body didn't look the part and my blood markers actually looked way better. So that showed that some healing did get done and that some improvement did get done on the inside. But as far as the outside goes, it definitely could have been better. I wish that a lot of variables would have stuck as they did from the beginning. Like I said, I had my shoulder injuries and I have my hip injury that flared up and my knee injury that flared up and so I was pretty sad that I didn't get the results that I wanted both physically as well as internally so that got to me and the reason why I'm doing this challenge is solemnly now for more of vanity purposes if you will but I think that if you look good you definitely feel good there is something uh, a little bit that's that is definitely cliche by the way but it's there's something that's definitely true about it and if you do feel look good i think you definitely tend to feel better and it's more of a confidence thing that just comes along with it and i know that i definitely don't feel super comfortable taking off my shirt in let's say a beach or even at the gym amongst bigger guys you know i definitely wouldn't feel comfortable because i know how i look and as kind of distorted as that my sound up here it's not about that it's about a, a little bit of half respect to myself and half I know I can do better so so yeah I'm definitely not giving up with this whole fat loss thing and I think that's where I wanted to start this off with and I, is that this is another challenge for me I know that carnivore diet fixed a lot of things for me but now I want to fix the physical things now I want to actually look the part and some people might say that that's a little bit conceited maybe of me or something like that, but I don't think that's the case. So without further ado, let's go into day one. So it is around 12 o'clock right now and I'm about to have my first meal of the day. This is the first time I've been doing intermittent fasting for a while and I think it's gonna yield some really great results, guys. So we'll see how this works out within the next actual week. I'm, I'm curious to see how much this in combination with the carnivore diet is gonna work out. So far, I feel like I'm starving. I won't, <laughs> I won't deny that, guys. So let me get some of this food in my body. Also, in case you guys were wondering what the hell am I eating? So what I'm eating today is just some ham hocks and bacon from the half a pig that I got. And if you guys haven't watched that video, I'm gonna link it up here. That way you guys check that out. That along with four eggs should be a good enough meal for right now. I also added a couple of pieces of pepper just to spice things up a little bit. Okay guys, so today is the second day of my fast. It is right now two o'clock, so 
I'm gonna start to break the fast as of right now. What I'm gonna be breaking the fast with is gonna be this kind of like soup that I made, which is basically, it has some meat and some of the sausage that we also made from that same pork. And it's all made with like bone broth. So it's all in like this kind of soup form. So that's what we're gonna have for lunch. And I'm gonna be eating another meal shortly after, depending on how I feel, but I'm gonna wait for my girlfriend. This is gonna be kind of a smaller meal and then we'll take it from there. We'll see how that works for, as of right now. So for all of those of you guys who are wondering, yes, this is day four of the intermittent fasting slash carnivore challenge. Today's a little bit of a, of a different day because finally for the first time, I felt that cognition benefit with slash function starting to pop up a little bit more in my head. And what I mean by this is if you guys have tried any type of prolonged fasting, such as like a 24 hour fast or even a 48 hour fast, you guys know that there is a really weird focus. Usually after the 24th hour, that's when it kind of starts happening to me or after one day of fasting where you get hyper focused and hyper aware of everything. Well, that sensation has been sticking around with me a lot more now that I'm eating a lot less. And I am also feeling a lot more relaxed, which is kind of weird. Even though I'm eating a lot less, I feel a lot better. And I'm finally starting to feel like today was the first day where I didn't feel as hungry as the other days. Because let's face it, I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't get hungry during those times. Yeah, well, you've probably gotten used to it. Uh, me going from a carnivore diet where I was basically able to eat at whatever time or whenever my stomach asked for any food, uh, just kind of migrated to this and now it's definitely been a change. But I feel that it's actually finally, my body's finally starting to acclimatize to this. So I'm feeling pretty good. Today's the day where I've actually haven't felt as hungry. So I'm looking forward to seeing the progress at the end of this week and seeing how things add up both in the mirror and in the scale. So guys, today is the seventh day of my fast. How I started to fast after like the third day that I started to kind of figure how things would work out better was instead of a 20 to four, I just did uh, one meal a day. So basically I would eat uh, at the same time, which was around four o'clock because I waited for my girlfriend to come back from work and then I would not eat until the next day. I did eat quite a bit and it was usually no carbs. So that's, that was the biggest thing I think that kind of is helping out with this fat loss. But let me show you, I used to weigh 196 um, when I finished the carnivore diet and that was my everyday kind of weight. Like if I weighed myself at any given time of the day, it would be 196. And right now it's midday with this diet and I just ate about two hours ago. So it's, well, it's actually not midday, it's like around five o'clock-ish. And right now my weight should be way up just because of the food that I intake and everything, but look at the weight. So that is exactly 10 pounds as of today, guys. That is the most amount of weight I have ever lost in any diet while still keeping a good amount of muscle. So now let me show you how all that looks and I haven't worked out at all. I think today was the first day that I kind of moved around but again with all the restrictions that I have because of my injuries I really can't do much so let me show you guys. So as you guys can see it is quite a bit there's quite a bit of a difference on this even this part here started to go down considerably. And as you guys can see, I haven't lost much muscle at all. I know a lot of people are super worried when they're fasting that they're gonna lose an insane amount of muscle. I still have quite a bit left over. I mean, I don't think that's one of my preoccupations right now. So, a good amount of muscle still remains. A good amount of fat has been shed off. That's 10 pounds, whether it was water weight, fat, it doesn't really matter. The weight is coming off, guys super happy with that. So as I mentioned guys, super stoked with the first seven days. So I'm super actually excited to see what the next seven days is gonna do. If it's another 10 pounds, it's actually gonna be a really drastic transformation for just 14 days. And if I go all 30 days, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, it'll be super interesting to see the overall results. So I'll keep you guys posted on this. So what do you guys think? 
so far the progress has been really good within this past week and I'm really really surprised as to where this is going and it's only been one week and I took off exactly where I left off with the carnivore diet. I, as soon as I saw that scale and as, as soon as I saw the results, I definitely realized that I wasn't where I wanted to be and that this challenge had to take place. I, I had to start this challenge. So hopefully you guys start to see that this is actually yielding some pretty awesome results. And hopefully you guys keep on following me throughout these next 30 days. But in any case, guys, thanks for joining me in another episode of Sage Experience. If you guys like this video, please push that subscribe button, push that like button, and push that notification bell if you guys haven't already done so. That way you guys get notified every time I come up with a video such as this. This is the first video on 30 days of intermittent fasting slash time restricted feeding slash carnivore diet and I think it's yielding some awesome results so definitely stick around to see the results guys but in any case guys they out peace dude you really have issues in your life, right really peace out mm -hmm. you're supposed to say peace out no no gotta die. Ah.